How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're making NYC style pizza. This means a thin crust of slow fermented dough topped with a thick delicious tomato sauce and loads of cheese. Now it is a three day process because we want to ferment this properly but it doesn't take a lot of hands on time. So making it is pretty simple so let's get to it and see what we need. So for the dough we'll need some strong white bread flour, water, yeast, salt and a bit of olive oil. For the pizza sauce we'll need some chopped tomatoes, salt, oil, oregano, garlic and a pinch of chili. Equipment wise a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, temperature probe. Now I've got the whole setup here. I got a paddle, I got a baking stone. These things are perfect when making pizza at home. Of course I understand not all of us have these things. So you could use a cast iron skillet instead and simply make your pizza a little bit smaller or use a thick metal tray. Of course we'll need a little pot for cooking the sauce in and a blender. The sauce should be nice and smooth and spreadable. Okay so let's begin. This dough is made with a poolish which is a pre-ferment. Using a pre-ferment in any dough will give extra flavor. All we need to do is take some of the water, a tiny pinch of yeast and some of the flour and mix it together. And we'll leave it to ferment for around 12 hours. My kitchen is around 22 degrees Celsius, so I'm using room temperature water. Mix your polish until you don't see any more dry flour. Now you don't have to transfer it to a jar. I'm only doing this to show you a better view of how it's rising. Feel free to keep it in the bowl that you made it in. But that's how simple a polish is, or any pre-ferment for that matter. You mix your ingredients and leave them to rise. And you want it almost triple in size. One thing you don't want to do is over ferment it. So let's have a look at the texture here. Look, it's nice and bubbly. And when I stir it, it has some resistance in it. If it's liquid and you can pour it out of the jar, it's overproofed. So let's move on to the main dough. I'm using cold water. As we are using a pre-ferment and kneading this dough by hand, it's going to warm up quite a lot. It's important to use cold water, otherwise your dough will over ferment. So in a large bowl goes the rest of the water, the rest of the yeast, the salt and the olive oil. And then follow that with the pre-ferment. And the pre-ferment is strictly there for flavor. It will give the dough that nice fermented sourness. And to intensify the flavor even more, we're going to ferment this dough for 24 more hours in the fridge. So you've got dough which is made with a pre-ferment and also cold proofed. And besides just adding flavor, it will also give a great texture to the crust. The longer your dough is fermented, the more crispy it will be. So once we add the remaining flour, mix it to a dough, dip it out on the table, now we can start kneading. This dough is right on the border of where you could use one kneading technique or a different one. And it all depends on the state of your pre-ferment. I'm going to start off by pressing it down and forwards with the heel of my right hand and using the fingers of my left hand I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand and turn and repeat. As you can see it's sticking to my hands and sticking to my table. So if that happens to you, you can try doing some stretching folds like I'm doing here. Pick the dough up by one side, stretch it against the table towards yourself and fold it over forwards. And always pick it up by the side, turning it 90 degrees. The whole kneading process from start to finish should not take more than 6 minutes. The dough might still be a little bit sticky after you're finished, but that's fine. Scrape it up, collect it into a nice bowl and always wet your hands when handling dough like this. So it's been 6 minutes, as you can see, I can pull it, it's nice and stretchy, it's ready to go. So let's clean down the mess, pop it into a bowl and take its temperature. You want the final dough temperature to be relatively low. 23 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. And that's why we use such cold water. So now simply cover it up and we'll leave it to sit for 30 minutes. That's all it takes. All this is for is to kickstart the fermentation. And after this, we can divide the dough, shape it up and cold proof it right away. So dust your dough bowl with flour all around. Grab your scraper, release the dough from the bowl Tip it out on the table, smooth side pointing down, and simply cut it in half. This makes two large pizzas. If your baking stone is smaller, or if you're using cast iron skillet, then you might want to divide this into three. You could even divide it into four. But regardless of how many pieces you're making, you need to shape them after dividing. Flatten your dough out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until it reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up 
tighten it against the table, pick it up, pinch the seam together at the bottom, and that's your dough ball done. And that's how easy this recipe is. We are already making pizza balls. Now right after shaping, they need to go in the fridge for up to 24 hours. So ideally, you want to have a container where you can place the dough balls in and place the lid on top. It's best to not touch the surface of the dough with anything. If you don't have such a container with a raised lid, then what I would suggest doing is place your dough on a tray or on a plate and then rub the surface with a little bit of olive oil and cover it with cling film. Now let's pop these in the fridge for up to 24 hours. And whilst they're chilling out and proofing, we can make the sauce. In a small pan on medium heat, add your olive oil, the garlic, the salt and the chili flakes. You want to cook this for around 5 minutes, just until the garlic starts getting brown around the edges. And once the garlic's brown nicely, add the oregano, give it a quick stir, and the final ingredient, the chopped tomatoes. Now bring it up to a simmer, turn the heat down and cook this for around 30 minutes. We want to reduce the sauce a little bit, which will intensify the flavor and make it sweeter. And I'm making the sauce on the same day as the pizza balls. There's a good reason for that, as it sits in the fridge for 24 hours, it'll get even tastier. So keep cooking it, stir it once in a while, and that's your sauce done. Now if you don't have a food processor or a stick blender, that's fine, keep the sauce chunky, but it's best when it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to use this thing and blitz it up. And that's how you make a super simple, yet really delicious tomato sauce. And you could use this for anything, it doesn't have to be pizza. And of course, don't forget to give it a taste and adjust the seasoning if need be. But this tastes good to me, so I'm going to pop it in the fridge and let it cool down completely. Right the following day, one hour before baking, preheat your oven, 240 degrees Celsius with a fan on. Also preheat your stone or your cast iron pan or your thick metal tray or whatever you're using. The oven has to be preheated right before baking. And look at those beauties, they're definitely ready to be made into pizzas. And here's how to shape them up. Shaping pizza is super simple, just follow my instructions. Dust both sides well with flour, don't use too much though. And then press the dough with your fingers from the center to the edge. Try not to use your fingertips, use the flat part of your finger and don't go right to the edge, leave a little lip. Every time you work your way from the center to the edge, turn the dough. If you feel an air bubble forming around the edge, slap it out. You may think, wow, it's cool to have a big air bubble on the edge of my pizza. But no, it's gonna burn in the oven. So just go ahead and slap them out every time you see them. And just gradually press the dough out, turn it. As you can see, it's getting bigger and bigger. If you feel that your dough is not moving freely or your hands are sticking to it, dust a little bit of flour. Now here's another way to stretch the dough a little bit further palms or your hands, stretch the dough at the same time as you turn it. Again, don't use your fingertips, use your whole fingers and the palms of your hands. Here's another way of doing it. Pick the dough up and then put it on your knuckles and have your knuckles close to the edge and then simply rotate the dough and let it dangle down and gravity will do the work. But whichever method you use, always start by pressing it out with your fingers and always work nice and gentle and gradually. You don't want to poke any holes or tear the dough. My pizza stone is quite large. You might not have to stretch your dough this big. I think this size will be just right. Now we can top it with the sauce. For this size of pizza, a good two tablespoons will be enough. If you put too much, things will get soggy. Now let's follow that with the final ingredient, the cheese. And this kind of pizza, it needs quite a large amount of cheese. So a good two handfuls. Spread it out nice and evenly. Now we are ready to put this in the oven. If you don't have a pizza paddle, you should put your pizza on a piece of baking paper after you shaped it, but before you topped it. If you do have a paddle, dust it lightly with some flour so the pizza doesn't stick. And then just slide that baby on there. And once it's on the paddle, you can stretch it out a little bit more because as you shake it into the oven, it will shrink a little bit. Now it's important to give the pizza a shake before you place it in the oven. If it's stuck to your paddle, you might as well return back to the table and fix it. Otherwise, the only thing that's gonna end up on the stone is the cheese. Trust me. 
Depending on your oven, this will take 6 to 8 minutes, and halfway through the bake you might want to turn it around. But once the cheese is melted and nicely browned, and the bottom of the pizza is nice and crispy, you're done. And that's how you make New York City style pizza. The beauty of it is its simplicity. The use of a pre-ferment and the long cold proof, that is what sets this dough apart. The crust is super crispy, it's nice and thin, and the nice sauce that we made, and together with the cheese, just all ties together perfectly. So what do you reckon to this pizza? Is that something you would make? Tell me what's your favorite pizza down in the comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.